Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some of the combos that um, I've been doing with Unchained and maybe we can go over a little bit of like the technical play um, aspect of the deck. I think the deck is really, really cool and I think that it has a lot of room for skill expression. And so I wanted to kind of show off some of the combos that I um, figured out uh, alongside like uh, the rest of the testing squad and and essentially um, things that I feel like would be really, really helpful for you to know if you're also going to be playing Unchained. Um, I know Weiss's Dortmund is right around the corner, so hopefully this video helps uh, as well as, you know, maybe for the future helps you uh, learn the deck a little bit more. One of the things that uh, a lot of people were, you know, questioning me or asking me about was like, how does one tour guy beat like Nibru? Um, so I think what we need to realize is that typically in the standard combo, um, I think, I think like this line is fine so far. So you can chilling one Yama, chilling two Rhino, you add a Ruha, you send Shavar, Shavar sets a back row. Typically here you have two choices. You can set Chamber or set Escape. If you want to play through uh, Nib, <clears throat> you typically want to set Chamber because it's a better card to set um, through Nibru. Um, and then for um, Escape, uh, you can also choose to set Escape as well. I think it like kind of like just depends um, on what you want more. Um, but typically chamber is like a little bit better into Nibru, but I think escape also works if you get Nib, doesn't really matter as much. Um, so when you go Ruha, pop, uh, one of the back row, you'll summon here the Shayama. I think the mistake that a lot of people originally made was that they would summon, um, Sarama here. And, uh, and I think that's fine too. But the reason why Shayama is so powerful is because of the fact that you basically save the graveyard effect of this card all the way to the end of the combo. So that um, if you were to get Nib, all you need is an extra spell or trap card in your hand to pop uh, to trigger Yama to keep extending past the Nibiru. And I'll show that in like the next line pretty much. Um, here you go with Shayama, target Aruha, and then you're going to use Aruha to summon Sarama. And then you'll link off the Yama and the Sh Shayama um, to make Rage. And then you go Sarama effect, set one of the back rows and then pop the Rage. And then you use Rage's effect to add the Shavar to your hand. Um, and then we'll go effect of Shayama to target the Sarama and then summon two sixes and then make Caesar and, and pass here. So the reason why this board is really good is for a couple reasons. Not only does it, um, really strong at playing around Nibru, um, which I can show right after this, but I wanted to show what happens if you don't get Nib because I think the issue that people were doing was the lines that beat Nibru ended on a really subpar board. So I wanted to show you like what the full combo looks like so that even if you were to get nib, uh, if you were to not get nib, like you make a really solid board, right? I think that's like really, really important. The reason why like ending on this type of board is like really strong is because of the fact that if your opponent changes of hearts or high king Caesar or mind controller or marionette might it, you can use the Shavara in your hand to basically dodge marionette might or um, some sort of like take or steal um, spells in the game. And that's really, really important because um, it allows you to uh, essentially uh, not get blown out by those power spells. Um, and so that's why you'll see that in like the YCS um, list, their deck list from Cancun, we didn't, I don't think we played Marinette Might at all. And the main reason is because of the fact that um, it's not really that good in the mirror if your opponent like combos pretty much like this, right? So you'll see that right here. Uh, the board that we have right here is like Wave King Caesar with one of the traps you kind of pick. Um, it's also kind of nice for a couple reasons, right? Um, a lot of people are probably wondering, like, if you set escape, like, how do you make it live? Well, what's really nice is um, there's two things, right? When you make this type of board, two things can happen. Either you can contest it on the rank six through an eclipse or a book of moon, or you negate with the rank six and you can set the other trap from the deck, which allows you to use... Uh, the Shavar in your hand to pop the other set. And I'll show you an example. So let's say Caesar doesn't get booked. You can uh, detach from Caesar. Shavar will set the other trap from the deck, like Chamber. By the way, in the mirror match, a, a really good pro tip is that um, in the mirror match, when you go first, you actually want to set Escape and not Chamber because we're assuming that like most likely like the mirror will break your board. And having access to a... Um, Having access to uh, escape is better because any unchained monster in your deck 
um, can be normal summon, and then you can use that normal summon to pop your opponent's rank six and keep playing pretty much. So that's kind of like the reason why. Um, escape is usually better to set, but generically, if you want to be like very generic, you well, you set escape. But typically in the mirror, you want to set the, the escape here. Okay. Well, you can use the Shavar to pop the chamber and then use chamber's effect and Yama's effect to summon back the rage of Yama and then use the chamber to summon the Rakea. Um, you typically want to go chain link one Yama, chain link two trap because um, you want to chain block Ash Blossom. I'm not Ash Blossom, but you want, you want to like chain block any, like, you know, maybe Bell or, or something along those lines, I guess, on Yama because um, that's the most important card that needs to resolve pretty much. Um, and what's really nice here is that when Yama summons back uh, the Link 2, you can actually uh, apply the effect to actually destroy your Shivara. And the reason why I typically do this is mainly because right now you're very exposed to a talent, right? Um, so essentially, if you were to get talents... Right, and the Shavar dies because of Yama, because Yama can destroy a card you control after it summons back. You can go like your opponent goes talents to take. Let's say you can go uh, chain Rakea, target Solar Rage, or or like chain chain Rakea, pop the Caesar, uh, and then you can chain Escape to pop the Rakea, then pop the Rage. And when the chain resolves backward, your opponent cannot take anything because you won't have a monster on the board uh, but then you get to apply like rakea to float you know rage to add back another uh card caesar to float so um you know you play around those blowout cards um and then the rakea can float into like another monster which like is pretty nice um and and also this same logic applies to, like thrust as well but keep in mind that like uh after you negate with caesar you decide when you want to like Shavara to summon Rage, pretty much. So, like, it's really nice because even if your opponent talents you, talents you on res of like negating off Caesar, you can easily go Shavara, pop Caesar, and then your opponent has to take your Shavara, which is like totally fine. So, I think that's like pretty nice. Um, but yeah, so this is typically the center end board, and even though it looks very, very weak, it actually puts up a lot more interruptions than people expect, pretty much, right? Um, the next thing I wanted to show was uh, this combo. Um, and in this combo, um, I want to showcase like how the dog is actually uh, used and why it can be very important to play it. So let's say we go and, you know, just one tour guide um, and we do the one tour guide combo. Um, in this scenario right here, you'll see that the dog can easily come up. Um, but it, it's like in this certain aspect that like the dog makes your life a lot easier at playing through the nib. Um, but you technically don't need it. But it's like it is very strong for sure. Because unless you make like one of the better end boards when you do get nib. Um, but I think one of the things you have to constantly evaluate is is it worth playing the brick? Um, and like, you know, how much of the time will it come up versus the amount of times it will brick you? Right, so you'll see right here, they'll usually nib you on Sarama, Shayama, and the Yama. Uh, nibbing towards the end is like probably the worst way to get nib because uh, you put a rage in the graveyard, and I can show you that too. But maybe, maybe I'll leave, leave that for you to figure it out. But usually, like they nib you on Sarama here, um, so that you don't get to like set back a card. And so what you do is you set like any card from your hand. And you can go Shayama, pop the back row, like Herald, for example, like a dead spell. Your Yama effect summon Sarama, then pop the Sarama off of Yama's effect. This will allow you to summon Disaster. And a lot of people here um, still don't do it correctly because what a lot of people end up doing here is they go Yama, target your opponent's nib, right? That That's fine too. And then you make like Mudcracker or Mudwrecker, bring back Shavar, and you overlay for rank six, and you go rank six pass. Well, Another cool play you could also do is you can actually link off the dog plus the Shayama to make Yama, then use Yama plus the Nib token to make Anguish, and you use Anguish to actually um, link off with your opponent's Nib. This is really nice because now you get access to Mudraker, and then you can use Mudraker to bring back the Sarama, 
Then use Sarama's effect to set back the dog, then pop the dog, which allows you to bring back Anguish. And then you can make uh, Nightmare Griffin set back a card and draw one. And it could also be noted that, like, this Yama could also be a Rage, so that, like, you know, Chamber is obviously better in that scenario. Um, but I figured, like, I'd show you, like, this line pretty much because I thought it would be really cool uh, with basically one target and any, like, card in your hand. And the, the line deviates a little bit depending on where you get Nib, but that's kind of, like, the general pattern um, of, like, how you play through Nib that you should look out for pretty much, right? So I um, hope that helps. Now... The other thing that uh, I wanted to show was also a um, another variation of how you play through Nib, except if you don't open Torgai, you open the two-guard combo, because the thing you need to figure out is that if one Torgai beats Nib, then every version of a two-guard combo should theoretically beat Nib, right? Because Torgai is basically a two-card combo, or like its, its value is like worth two cards. And um, so in this scenario, that means that every two-card combo should theoretically beat Nib, right? So... You go Rula, pop the trap, and then I'll just show you this variation. I'll just speed through it, right? So, uh, Shayama, pop. This is also another pattern that you should recognize that, like, whenever you go Rula, pop a back row, you should typically try to Sarama, pop the Aruha before you make the link, before you make Yama. And the reason why you do that is because it allows you to play through impermanence on Yama more efficiently. Um, then you can make these two, set a back row. Um, and here, the trick is to add Rakea. And that allows you to uh, summon and access to Rama. And I don't know if you've noticed, this position right here is the same position that we are in uh, when I showed you how to play Nib with Disaster. Because if you get Nib here, you set any back row, trigger Yama, banish yourself, summon back to Rama, pop this Rama, summon Disaster, yada, 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 right? So that's kind of like pretty much like the same pattern here. So it doesn't matter if you get Nibbed here pretty much, right? Then you make Anguish, you go Sarama, set a back row, pop the Rage, add back Shivara, Shayama, pop the Sarama, and then boom, pretty much there it is, right? So you get the same end board um, just every time, pretty much. Um, so, uh, so this is like pretty much um, like the end board I always go for. Like I said, it has a lot of pros. Being able to play around Marinid Might, change a heart in the mirror mage, uh, in the mirror match, Nib, uh, Talents. Like, uh, I was in at, during the Wises, I was getting combination power spells, which, like, they were change of heart in me, talents in me, um, thrusting all one turn, and they would still lose. Because the deck plays really, really good defense when you set up your board this way. And having the Shavar in your hand um, as a quick effect allows you to have more room to outplay your opponent. Um, and I think that's, like, really, really important. Like, that extra interaction uh, is, like, really, really important, pretty much, right? So, then. Um, I'm going to show you another combo here. Um, and this is like basically like uh, one of the things that uh, I heard people talk about was that Bissiels, like Jewish Worm and Magma, were good into the deck. Well, we kind of solved that issue and figured out how do we like, you know, anti Bissiel, anti Nib combos that happen. Like, you know, essentially, if you draw like a better hand, you should be able to utilize those cards more effectively. So if you open like a three card combo, like you should like do more with it right so um and this is one of the mistakes that i see people make where they open like multiple card combos but they're not sequencing it correctly and as a result they're not getting full value value of their cards or they're not playing through more things as if they open more cards right like they expose themselves to more um hand traps or um, all those other things um uh even though they open like a really solid hand right so hand uh, an example here is like technically a two card combo but with a ruha uh, beats Bissiels and Nib if you just uh, give up a card in your hand. It's kind of neg, but you know, if you open a two card combo, it's game two, your opponent size Bissiels and Nib. I think it's worth it to give up a card in your hand uh, to like do it this way. Unless you specifically have Thrust or Talents, in which case you want to play into Nib and, and, and Jewish Worm on purpose so that you can Thrust and Talents them. And that was one of the things I did. Like my uh, YCS Cancun deck played three Talents, three Thrust in the main so that I purposely played into Nib. Um, or I played like a I played like a bows on purpose because I'm like you know I want my opponent to nib me like I want them to hand trap me so I can look at their hand for free and just play through it. So, but you know let's say you have like two card combo three blanks that are not that great. This is something you can like do and, and evaluate right. So Arua pop trap summon Shayama Shayama pop Arua summon Shivara. You know send the line so far. 
Yama one, Shavar two set of back row, add Sarama. Uh, effect of Shayama to pop the back row. Back row effect, summon Shavara. And here, uh, you can overlay for the rank six. And what's really nice here is that your opponent cannot drop Juice Worm at this point in time because there's no light or darks in the graveyard. And you don't expose yourself to any sort of light or darks so that, um, you know, people, they just keep the Magnema, they just keep the Juice Worm in their hand pretty much, right? And the rank six. Um, plays really well in Abyssals, and I think this is a play that people should do when they know they're playing against Dragon Link, right? Um, and then here you can go normal summon, set a back row, and then pop like let's say like a dark contract is a really really good power card to pop here, right? Because you can like add the free card off the dark contract, and then you pop it for free off Sarama and set the free trap. And then the Vice King will add you another dark contract next turn anyway, so like the card you add for free is like totally fine, right? So um, I think that's pretty nice. And then boom, here it is. You pretty much have Rage, Caesar, Escape, and that's pretty solid. Uh, it does come with a cost because doing this combo like doesn't play around Change Your Hearts the best necessarily per se. But I think it's still fine. If your opponent Change Your Hearts, you have to just activate Escape, pop your Rage, and pop your Caesar. Because if they take your Caesar, it's like pretty bad for you. Um, so I think like doing it that way is like totally fine. Or if they like thrust you. You can like pop both your monsters so like they can't set anything or they can't add it to the hand they have to like set it so i think that's fine too so now i want to show you a pretty much a um three card combo and this actually came up for me at the ycs and i like doing this play because i think it like pretty much covers your bases really well so when you open a ruha trap and then tour guide you know i feel like you should be able to like play around everything right so this is what i do um standard two card combo line so far uh, and then we add a Shavar back to her hand, which is like basically like insane. Then you go Shayama, pop the back row, summon another Shavar, and like I said, overlay for the rank six here. Then you can normal summon Tor Guy, Tor Guy summon Rakea. You make the rage up top. Then you can go Shavar, pop the Rakea, then trigger Rakea to summon Sarama. Then you can go um, Sarama effect to pop the Shavara. And then you have Escape, Sarama, Rage, Caesar, but you play around Nib and Bistos a lot more effectively. But um one of the things you could also do is you could also like uh not add shavara from the graveyard pop your rage uh and then add a shavar back to your hand and then make another link too and that also works too like there's a bunch of variations on like uh, around like what you want to like play around and, and all that good stuff but these are kind of like pretty much the general themes and combos you should kind of like look out for um as you're like learning how to play the deck um i think like the I think I'm probably going to do a stream where I take this deck to local. So maybe you can like learn fr from the gameplay itself. But if you guys enjoyed like just pretty much like the um, a high level overview of like the combos, some of like the technical play things you can do, um, then then yeah, give, give, it, give it a like and let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts. But hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.